<laughs> Senator, I am so grateful for this opportunity. I won't let you down. I promise. I'm sure you won't, George. <clears throat> I've heard. I'm sorry. I'm fine. I know it's upsetting. <laughs> I'm fine. I know it's upsetting to you. <laughs> I'm fine. I can't say as I'm surprised. It's always business before government for him. You're thinking of doing it. Oh, no, no. Now is not the time to change things. I know. Don't go out there and start railing against him with all your upper crust talk. I, I know. Mr. Ball can wait. The people want to know what you're going to do for them. Well, and the tribunal want to know about this. And we can think about that later. Congress didn't even want to hear about the tax bill. Come here, your tie's crooked, of course. They just don't have your vision. I've been thinking about that. Perhaps it would be good to have more people in here with your vision. Yeah, well, Millie, it's funny you bring I'm just concerned that we get someone with experience who knows the ropes. Someone who spent time in Tallahassee. Yeah, that's good you bring that up. Not one of these was... young sycophants just waiting for the next big break. Perhaps we should ask Bill. I just asked George. There's a chair with blue balloons at the beginning of the path. Just, just follow that up. <laughs> You'll go on right after me. Uh, Mrs. Pepper, thank you so much for this opportunity. You're welcome. But I am so excited to be a part of the team. I believe we have 45 minutes. Actually, it's an hour with the meet and greet. We are due in Ocala by five. Let me know at 50. Okay. I better go make the announcements. It'll be fine. And now the man you've been waiting all afternoon to see. The man who's looking out for you. Senator Claude Pepper. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. An honor to be here today. You know, every time there is an election, there will always be at least one candidate to come out and say, I stand for management and labor. Well, I can tell you that's a sure sign that he doesn't want to offend the upper crust crowd. There is one thing I can tell you today, my friends, and that is that the upper crust crowd will pretty well take care of itself. Two dollars. $2 service charge on an oil job. You believe it. And it's a big company, too. I mean, they got lots of stations all around. Why well, they got a nickel and dime a little guy like that, huh? <sighs> well, I got this job for six months now. Good for you. <laughs> I figure if I work hard, I'll be a desk manager, maybe a, even a shift supervisor. I got plans. <laughs> oh, uh, just so you know, uh, Mr. Ball sits first, and uh, also, uh, I'll let him talk to you first. I know Mr. Ball. Oh, how long? How long what? How long have you known Mr. Ball? Longer than six months. <laughs> like I said, just make sure you let him sit first. Those would be ideals. Sir? Your plans, they're ideals. Oh. He's not there. Will you tell the Senator Ed Ball hopes he enjoyed his vacation? You're just in time, Joe. We need a swing vote. Roger here seems to think you can't get ahead without money, and I seem to think you can't get ahead without smarts. Then again, Roger has a degree. Well, you can't understand every business. Ooh, a mediator. Where are we at on the Highway 71 project? State just put out the contracts. Completion date? 48. It's two election cycles. You jump in the pond twice. It's not the DOT, it's the FTC. That's the problem. Now, Roger here is trying to get me to talk nasty about them politicians up in Washington. Not at all, Mr. Ball. I'm trying to get him a complete picture. I'm not afraid of any politicians. Of course not, Mr. Ball. They're all alike. Then again, Roger here is educated. <laughs> Joe, I am telling you, you have got to bring your wife up to Wakula Springs. It is heaven on earth. Oh, we just haven't had the time, sir. No, I suppose not with all them trips up to Tallahassee on the I-95 project. That's, uh, that's four years. That's... Five hundred thousand. Six. Six minus the gravel from Georgia. That makes five. It's not a nice paycheck. Might even be nice enough to take a trip to Wakula. Roosevelt continued his opposition of the tax bill today, refusing to sign what he said, quote, gives not to the needy, but the greedy, end quote. How's our Mr. Edmonds doing? He's crisscrossing the state. Joe, I've given that man a lot of work probating the DuPont Trust. So again, I ask, how is he doing? He seems to be garnering support. Is he ahead or behind? It would seem that his message is not quite reaching the people. Well, that is distressing. 
You had dinner with our Senator Pepper? Yes, sir. I assume it was pleasant. The Senator has a one-track mind. There was nothing in your meal he could digest. I made it very clear to him that the business community... He couldn't would... find any appetizers. No, sir. He's supporting Roosevelt. Well, this is a disappointing evening all around. As I said, the Senator is very narrow-minded. That, uh, a campaign manager of his, that, uh... Smathers. <laughs> not the brightest fold in the closet. It's positive the judge, isn't it? Didn't he want to be a professional football player? Old man wouldn't let him. Damn, Pepper. Supporting that tax bill. You know what the problem with politicians is? No, sir. You never can tell when they're going to get ideals. <laughs> <laughs> get me Edmonds on the phone. Has he seen it? I don't believe so, ma'am. Did you hear about Mr. It's Smith? Not Alex, taxable gains on properties transferred will not be recognized for tax purposes. Now, he's trying to bury his tax liability. Senator, we need to focus on your campaign. But he doesn't want to pay taxes on that railroad he bought. But, but the Soviets are the issue here. Listen, if we don't raise money for this war, our boys are going to be fighting with sticks. But the Soviets are a threat. Our threat are big businesses. Now, I think George has a point. Mm. It's become big. You see? It's become very big. You see? Senator Pepper and his cronies will take away your individual freedom by edicts. Rules and regulations controlling the agriculture, business, and industry of the nation. Oh, Edmonds. Wait a minute. Reads like a smear. Hey, he's just blowing off steam. No, I was talking about the Soviets, or which is George, what I know you want me to go after the Soviets. Ed Ball wants a 95% profit because a 90% profit isn't enough. Why, that 5% difference could help our boys win the war. But the Soviets are... Uh, they... Listen, George, I know you want me to go after the Soviets, and you are asking me to be someone I am not. I am what I am, George. Evelyn! Oh. Uh, the uh, education briefs and the reports on the Veterans Rehabilitation Centers Ham and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and George. That Mr. Smathers is something. Yes, he's proven himself quite an assistant to Claude. Did he tell you? Who, Claude? No. No, no need. No. He's certain George is perfect. No, did George tell you? He is going to Japan. He's going to be a Marine. Thanks for calling. How could I forget? Job suits you, right down to the shoes. Jack and Coke, right? Where you staying? The Willard. So how's U.S. Party Boy enjoying the big city? Not as much as you. It'll come. Can't believe how much you look like your father. He's such a gentleman. So I hear your boy is the new Roosevelt. Nothing wrong with that. A little over the top with that last speech, don't you think? It's not hurting him in the polls. I hear Edmund's campaign is really heating up. You know something I don't? He was in ten counties last week. Do you know something I don't? How much money does Edmunds have? Look at you. Three months and Washington's grown on you. Didn't your mother ever tell you not to go into politics? I thought you'd like it. So how much does he have? You know, I'm beginning to feel like a nobody, George. What do you say we don't talk money on your birthday?
Come here. Please. How's the missus? Um, fine. Enjoying Jacksonville. Joe Jr. Uh, getting into some trouble, but we'll get him straightened out. Well, don't spare the rod and spoil the child. Did me a world of good. Listen, Joe. I wanted to show appreciation for all the work you've done up in Walton. Uh, well, we're trying to get the contract finished. Wanted as soon to give as you a little token of my appreciation. Uh, I thought you and the missus could use a vacation. But the campaign. We'll be set. It's only a week away. Thank you, we'd be fine. We haven't finished with some of the districts. You know, I, I don't know if you've been reading the papers, but that, uh, and Martin Anderson, he's pretty full of himself. I'll take that canal and I'll build it myself, but he can go wallow in that swamp he calls Orlando. I told Marty it wouldn't go over well if he bashed Edmonds. Well, I take it the conversation did not go well. Well, let me speak to him again. I'll make sure that he understands your position. You look tired, Joe. Take a vacation. Let me speak to Anderson again. I can get this We're place. done. I've asked Daniel Crisp to handle it. Crisp? That two-tongued? Whose idea was that, Rogers? You put Crisp on this campaign and it's an audit invitation for the IRS. Enjoy Cuba, Joe. Don't forget to bring me back some cigars. Well, there have been more surprises in this campaign than in Texas, right? <laughs> well, they have not all been counted. Well, I will let you know as soon as I do. <laughs> no, I am not losing that bet. <laughs> all right, thinks he's gonna outlast me in office, and I told him he'd be fishing before me. You are gonna wear out this carpet, George. It is always like this on election night. This party campaign has been waging. It was a virtual unknown in the field about a month ago. And yet, we see another county go red, and Hillsboro has just swung an Ali Edmonds favor. But the big question tonight is, how will Miami date switch? How's your dad? Doctor says he's going to be okay. Tell him he's in our prayers. Thank you. You know, Claude was looking for you last night. I, I was with a staffer. I was so surprised to find out that Ollie was being funded by Ball. I don't think anyone knew. It was best that Claude stay focused on the campaign. Yes, we have another surprise that Orange County has gone red. So it all depends on Miami days. And do we have the results? Yes. And we have the winner for the 1944 U.S. Senate seat from Florida. An incredible race by only 10,000 votes. Senator Claude Pepper has... <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to pour that champagne. Well, a toast, everybody. The people of Florida have spoken. And to Florida. To, to Florida. Florida. Congratulations, Senator. Congratulations, Claude. We've got something else to celebrate. Really? <laughs> Not for me, Claude. For George. Congratulations on your commission. Commission? To George. To George. <laughs> yeah. God knows we need every able-bodied man we can get. You have to beat those Nazis back to Berlin. But give us a song, Senator Pepper. Oh, no. Oh, no. come on. <laughs> every time it rains, it rains. <laughs> Pennies from, from heaven. heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains Pennies from heaven, you'll find your fortune falling all over town. Make sure that your umbrella is upside down. <laughs> Get your hat. It's going to be a cold walk to the Senate. Ma'am, after his reports, I want you to make sure he takes a break in the afternoon. Swearing in or not, he's going to dive right in. Yes, ma'am. I hate that thing. Yes, ma'am. Well, do you like that, that rusty paperweight? I think the Senator likes it, ma'am. Yes, but when the Speaker of the House comes in to meet with the Senator, all he sees is 
This? Yes, ma'am. Well, would you like to be staring at this? <laughs> ma'am, I don't think I would be having a meeting with the senator. I think we should at least clean it up. No, I think the senator likes his paperweight just the way it is. We should at least brass over it. <clears throat> Ma'am, I think if we clean it up, the senator will keep asking me who touched his paperweight. He'll notice someone touched it every time it's moved. This paperweight. All the time. All the time? All the time. Are you sure? Oh, all right. Let's get ready for the luncheon, ma'am. He knows me. I'm like a son. It's been eight months already. The Marines agree with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> I hear you boys are doing some great work on that island. Uh, I hear that we got those Japanese, or they're, they're some stubborn SOBs. Uh, it's a whole new ball game with them. Well, I hear we got them right where we want now. <laughs> I just have to put this back. Oh. Good. George. Straight from the war. What a nice Surprise! Don't get to Mrs. see Pepper. you. Mrs. Pepper. Oh, uh, yes. George? It's your anniversary this week, right? <laughs> is it? Yes! It's dinner at the Mayflower. <laughs> George, that is so kind of you. Well, I won't keep clawing from you any longer. Millie, someone touched this paperweight. <laughs> <laughs> Not even God. Evelyn made sure of that. <laughs> George, I hear the Soviets are deep into Japanese territory. And the 15 Jap ships hit, 475 aircrafts down. We're making progress. Well, I hear the end isn't too far off. No, and I know it won't be easy. Senator, I... We were in Tarawa. We've been shelling pillboxes all day, waiting for the tide to come in. It felt like two days. Finally it came in and, and we cast off and that's when they started firing. From the left, from the right, just men being mowed down. The only place to hide was behind this log. There was this guy, Corporal, 2nd Division. He's just beckoned to get in. He, there was just no room. There was nothing I could do. It's a hell of a business. There are a lot of little guys, Senator. Which, which is why we are here. Did you get my letter? Yes, yes, I and, did, and it's not that simple. It's just an assignment. It takes time. It's I'm just the Justice Department. Right people, your commission's almost done. Yes. Yeah, my commission's almost done. We're wrapping things up over there. And, and Senator Morris got another lawyer out last week. Wouldn't my talents <laughs> be better used here? Uh, the, the breakers? Don't you worry about that now. What's that all about? Don't worry about that. Hotel is being used for a military transport and a hospital, and the management is refusing to let the soldiers stray from the sidewalk. Ed, Ed Ball owns the breakers. Which is why we are addressing the situation. Did you hear that DuPont got controlling interest in the Florida East Coast I Railway? I am aware. Well, I can help you with that. I, I can get the unions on board. I already have a meeting scheduled. Well, are they, are they on board? Yes. They've got to be on board. George, you thinking of running for office? just want to get back to D.C. Well, you let me know as soon as you do. You'll be the first.
Oh, they got you a wine? Thanks. Thanks for coming. I was tired of the calls. You look good. That dress suits you. I almost gave you the key. We should go to dinner. I'd like it if you meant it. Dinner and you in that dress. You're thinking about it. I haven't decided. But I do like that dress, though. Not even out of the Marines yet. You're thinking about it. <laughs> you know me that well. You're your own man. You'll run for whatever seat you want. What does Claude say? Where do you want to go? Where? To dinner. In that dress. The plume or the Willard Room? I prefer plumes. You order a steak, you don't have to wait. Their filet? Best in D.C. Here I thought you were only interested in what went on during the day. <laughs> Deals are done at night. I'm a deal. <sighs> of course not. Surprised you couldn't talk Pepper out of those ICC hearings. He's his own man. It's too bad. <clears throat> I have nothing but the utmost respect for Senator Pepper. <laughs> you Sigma Alpha Epsilon, you. There's a picture going to float around. It's Pepper with that communist Paul Robeson. It'll be interesting to see how North Florida likes that. Lots of people are going to be angry. Lots. You've heard of people power, George? I thought we were here to talk about money. We're here to talk about meeting my boss. See you at Plumes? George has already warned me. We will get them on board. We will get them on board. <clears throat> Mr. Sykes, Senator. Oh. Yeah. Good morning, John. Mr. Sykes. <laughs> I heard you had some trouble on your way up. Your route was switched. Five hours for a speeding bullet. <laughs> well, it can be crazy with the military transport. Actually, it was the walk over here. It just about killed me. D.C. is its own very special kind of heat. We appreciate the effort. Uh, Evelyn, could you get a glass of iced tea in here for Mr. Sykes? Oh, no, no, thank you. Well, as long as I've known you, I've never seen you refuse an iced tea. No, I'm fine. You sure? Yes. All right, well, continuing with our conversation from Friday, and Senator, you being I... on board with the ICC hearings Tuesday, Senator, I... I think it would be best before the hearings Tuesday that we formalize the fact that we have your support. You don't. No, we don't. No, you don't. But John, when we spoke Friday... <laughs> the Atlantic coastline has no ties to Florida. That CEO in Delaware, he doesn't care about a union man in Florida. DuPont's from Delaware. John, if you think you're going to be able to keep those jobs once that ball gets a hold of the ball railroad... has ties to Florida. He also has ties to the paper mill. I believe there's still no union in there. Like I said... Do the railway labor executives know about this? National does not speak for local. If Ed Ball doesn't make his numbers... We'll make his numbers. But if he doesn't make his numbers, he will cut costs and payroll will be the first to go. We're 20 unions strong. Not locally. John. The unions with Ball. You understand that suicide. Good day, Senator. Are you okay, Senator? Fine, fine. Do you want me to reschedule? No, no. Uh, bring him in. Uh, who? Halling. Sergeant Halling, Senator. Sergeant Halling, we're pleased. The Union appreciates your sacrifice. Uh, thank you. You were in Bataan. <coughs> yes, sir. God bless you, son. Where are you from? Uh, Taylor County. Taylor? I have a mean chili cook-off there. Uh, I was 16 when I won the green chili eating contest. Didn't keep that chili down for long. <laughs> what did your parents do? Uh, Daddy did some sharecropping. He struggled in cotton. Uh, I was just a kid, though. I just wanted to catch my next fish. <laughs> Dead man's bay. Caught my first kingfish <laughs> right there. Ha <laughs> 10. 20 pounds. Oh, I bet you worked up a sweat reeling him in. <laughs> I thought he was going to drag me off the boat. I had my feet up in the rim. I pull in and pull. <clears throat> Nothing. 
Nothing like that, Marlon, you got there, Senator. He looks like a real fighter. Oh, yeah, I was pulling and pulling. <laughs> I uh, see you're wounded. Uh, concussion. This eye's kind of messed up. My friends say at least I won't be crying no more. Huh. Where are you recuperating? At the <coughs> Breakers. Oh, yes, well, I, I hear that's wonderful. Well, we get three squares to tot, so most of the guys don't complain. Um, we don't get to walk around much, though. Well, what do you mean? Well, we can walk on the sidewalks all we want, but we're not allowed to walk on the grass. Management says it's for the golfers. I, it seems kind of strange to me you can't walk on the land that you fought for, but what are you going to do? Tell you what, Sergeant Howling. Let's see what we can do about that breaker situation. You just take care of that head there. You're going to need it in the coming years. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. No, thank you. Evelyn, could you get me Ted Scott from the Tallahassee Democrat on the line, please? Major Smathers is on the phone, Senator. Uh oh. George. Oh, well, our prayers are going out to you and your family. Uh, Stalin. Uh, he wants six billion? <laughs> no, it's out of the question. He feels the Soviets have suffered some major losses. <coughs> Yes, we are on track with the ICC. I'm in the process of working on that right now. <laughs> uh, listen, you just take care of your family. Mildred and I send our condolences. Uh, uh, yes, we have the labor on board. I'm in the process of working on that right now. <laughs> well, I am. But you just take care of your family. There will be plenty of time to talk about that when you get back. Okay. Goodbye. high school dance. Jody had switched into a pair of red shoes after she left the house. <laughs> Catherine was pretty upset. She said she felt betrayed, so oh. I suggested to her that maybe Jody could stay with us for a while. Well, absolutely. I could take her down to the bay. We'll go fishing. She's 16. Yeah, it's old enough to bait your own hook. She's 16. <laughs> and she doesn't want to bait her own hook. I'll take her around town. We'll go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> she does not know what she is missing. <laughs> It was nice of George to think of us. Yes. Yes, bud. This cake is delicious, isn't it? <laughs> yes, but what? I just... Have you ever seen George act so strangely? No, he's just still a little upset about his father, is all. Don't you find it odd he's changed his position with the ICC? He just feels that Ed Ball has a much stronger case. It seems kind of sudden. Well, I'm sure George would agree with you. You know, there's rumors he's running for Pat Cannon's seat. If he is, then that's the step he's got to take. I just... I just want you to remember that he's not family. Oh, really? Oh, how about a dance? Will you keep an eye on him? I now? will keep an eye on him, Millie. Now, will you ease up? Now, come on. What do you say? Remember? Second day, <laughs> Cherokee Hotel. <laughs> I was handsome then. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you can't dance, Mrs. Pepper. I'd be delighted, Mr. Gable. <laughs> <laughs> for ton mile for produce from Orlando. In addition, the carriers are asking for a 13% increase. The boys coming back from the war buying automobiles. Passenger service can't compete. It won't maybe a problem. Right, Sykes got the unions to back us. It's not gonna be a problem. Joe, I believe you know Mr. Crisp. Mr. Crisp. 
the unions are not going to be a problem. Everyone has a price. Now you tell the senator that Ed Ball wants an hour of his time. An hour. You were saying. Here's to the new owner of the Florida East Coast Railway. Here, here. Here's to the district court coming to its senses. Isn't that right, Roger? Yes, Mr. Ball. Well, that certainly deserves another toast. To a profitable railroad. To profit. Now, I know the two of you haven't been putting your heads together. No, no Mr. Mr. Ball. I mean, you didn't happen to mention the produce to get us three and a half cents a mile. Or that our boys coming home are buying up cars like they're going out of style. Yeah, didn't think you were. And in a surprise move, the ICC has decided to reopen hearings on the bankruptcy case of the Florida East Coast Railroad. These hearings have been spearheaded by Florida Senator Claude Pepper. Looks like our problem's much bigger than that, gentlemen. It's high time. High time this country did something about these socialists. We can look into his tax returns, his investments. But ever since that Soviet trip, Pepper's been hemorrhaging liberals. They're looking for any other alternative for Democrats. There are more than one way to skin a cat. Linda, my darling, would you mind coming in here, please? Versus public interest. Private supersedes, supersedes public interest. Public interest. Have you seen George? Make public interest resonate in their ears. I told him nine o'clock. Focus. He needs to see how the hearings work. You really need to make the hearings work. Ready to go. Hmm. Senator Pepper, Senator Pepper, oh, what do you think you'll get out of these proceedings? Well, I'm thinking we'll get justice, gentlemen. Uh, do you think you'll be able to change the ICC's rule? I'm only looking out for the interests of the people of the state of Florida. But what about the interests of the St. Joe Company? Uh, don't they have a say in their interests? The day, in the, the, uh, the day when private supersedes public interest will be a dark one. Is this a vendetta against Ed Ball? As I said, it is about private versus public interest. And Mrs. Pepper, do you think your husband's in danger? I do. I think he's in danger of being blinded by your balls. <laughs> now, Senator Pepper, we have previously rejected the application of the Atlantic Coastline. Oh, which I might add was a grave mistake. <laughs> which was to give the Atlantic Coastline majority ownership in the railway. Well, if I may, Commissioner, the uh, ACL already serves the vast majority of the Atlantic seaboard. Now, the acquisition of the Florida East Coast Railway would be an addition to an already outstanding service. Senator Pepper. The St. Joe Company is the major creditor in the Florida East Coast Railway. That majority interest, according to the ICC plan, confers ownership on the St. Joe Company when the railroad is scheduled to come out of the receivership. The FEC securities were purchased in bulk at a depressed price with the intention of controlling the rails. Now, I have simply raised the question on whether it's in the public's interest for the railways to be controlled by one estate. Now, an estate that already controls the St. Joe Paper Mill and the Florida National Bank, an estate that is operated by one man, Mr. Edward Ball. Now, the power of that private estate promises a, a future where Florida is shackled by the, the whims of the private sector. Sorry, I'm late. New shoes? Straight from the box. Congratulations. On... Your ICC initiative. Modesty, George. Can't figure you out these days. Before I forget, Truman. 
asking you to run. People talk. What does your boss think of it? You know, I used to think you came here to see me. What does he think of it? I remember. Do you remember that party we were at where Stephen Gardner, Stephen Gardner said he could throw a football past the Lambda Chi house? <laughs> and you got out there. And the look in your eyes. <laughs> and you cracked the back window. <laughs> Excuse me, I seem to have forgotten my hat. I swear I'd forget my hat if it wasn't screwed on right. <laughs> the back window. <laughs> I keep forgetting that woman's name. Her? Yes. Well, that's Linda Fullerton. Ed Ball's associate. She comes down here all the time. Meets with the other one. That's right. You know, I think I remember where I left my hat. Look. What? That looked like Mrs. Pepper. They say her husband has the most clout of any Democrat in Congress. That trip of his to the Soviet Union? What's pray for Stalin? Ease up. There are people who think a real American <coughs> should be in that seat. And these people prefer a right-wing Democrat. Sometimes you have to do what you don't like. Look, my boss has a lot of people to choose from, but he's looking for someone who's his own man. I'll be here. If you're interested, show up. Maybe you'll get to meet him before Mrs. Pepper does. You sure you have an appointment with Mr. Ball? Yes, I'm sure. And they checked at the front desk? Yes, they checked at the front desk. You know Mr. Ball? Yes, I do. What did you say your name was? Pepper. Mildred Pepper. Well, I never heard of you. Uh, you ever visited Mr. Ball before? No, no, I haven't. Uh, that's why. Uh, look, I, I'm not trying to be rude, Mrs. Pepper. It's just that Mr. Ball is very particular, and he don't like anyone upset in his apple cart, if you know what I mean. If you upset his apple cart, apples will never get back in, and, and we don't want that. <laughs> Just so you know, uh, Mr. Ball sits first. <clears throat> oh, uh, Mr. Ball's not here, so I guess just have a uh, relax. Mrs. Pepper. Oh, please. <coughs> uh, iced tea, correct? I believe that's what you drank when we were at the Capitol Grill during the 39th session. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> they say it's going to be hot. A little too hot for me. You learn to love the heat. This is a lovely room. Oh, what is this game? Oh, it's called Fox and Geese. The geese try to pen in the fox while the fox hunts down the geese one by one. <laughs> Mrs. Ball and I picked it up when we were in Scotland. Do you play? No. How is Mrs. Ball? Back with the family. Your family's from Virginia, correct? Northumberland County. I heard that your family struggled when you were younger. You know, Claude is the same way. His daddy was a sharecropper. Barely get a hundred dollars for cotton for the season. We didn't plant cotton. He worked his way through school. Well, I think it's quite amazing what you've done for yourself, Mr. Ball. I heard you even went out west for the gold rush. You've done your research. I also heard that you sold model teas out in California. You certainly are the epitome of the American work ethic. <clears throat> Did you know that um, we are from St. Petersburg, but Daddy grew up in Alabama? He always used to say, it's not good to go back on your upbringing. Mm. 
Mr. Ball, I hear that there's a pamphlet going around concerning my husband. I understand that it's smearing my husband's service to the people of the state of Florida with communist slander. I am sorry to hear that. Now, you know he's not a communist. <clears throat> Mr. Ball, I'm here today to ask you to please stop publication of this pamphlet. I'm just one man, Mrs. Peppin. I'm begging you. This pamphlet will not just destroy my husband's career. It'll destroy my husband. Your family comes from the papers. Yes, my father owned the Andalusian News. How did that fare? He was able to make a living for 15 years. Claude helped you build roads in the Panhandle. Which is why it was so surprising to me when he turned his back on his upbringing. I didn't know the tax credit for business in the bill was for Floridians. Florida wanted that bill. Mr. Ball. I am begging you as a human being, please do not destroy this man. If you want to help your husband, Mrs. Pepper, I suggest you change his mind about the ICC hearings. But that is his decision. The ICC! Now, I'm not an educated man, Mrs. Pepper, but I know when my business interests are being threatened. As a newspaper woman and a college graduate, I think you know exactly what I am talking about. Thank you for taking time out of your day to come and see me. Good day. Mrs. Pepper, is the senator... He should be back in a minute. You look tired. I can never seem to get the job done. It keeps you up at night? Yes, ma'am. Sorry to hear about your father. Ma'am? I know it must have been a blow. He'd been sick for a long time. Still, it must be hard. Were you close? As close as can be. We've heard rumors that you met with Truman. I can't help those rumors. So did he? Yes, ma'am. And are you? <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. For Congressman Cannon's seat. Yes, ma'am. Surprised you didn't tell Claude yourself. Like I said, I'm still thinking about it. Would be a great opportunity. Yes, it would. I hear you've changed your position with the FEC reorganization. Done a lot of thinking. And now you don't support it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Mr. Ball would not be happy if the ICC changed. I have not spoken to Mr. Ball on his position. And with all the newspapers he has behind not him. Not all the newspapers. <laughs> Linda Fullerton didn't clue you in? Linda Fullerton? Last night, at the Mayflower Hotel. I know her from UF. Are you running against Claude? Every time it rains, it rains. Pennies from heaven. With all due respect, Mrs. Pepper, why didn't you ask Mr. Ball when you went and saw him last week? You may find your fortune falling. Ah, uh, three, two, one, my dear. The ICC reversed its decision. Three, two, one. The St. Joe Company will not hold a controlling interest in the Florida East Coast Railway. George, we missed you at the hearings. Uh, I had a lot to tie up with the estate. Well, you were very much missed. My apologies, Senator. We're not overloading you, I hope. Of course not. Well, you'll let us know if we do. Uh, Evelyn, could you give me WJAX on the phone, please? So, 
What's Truman's office like? Yeah, Truman has got this picture of him and a six-pound grouper. It's a hell of a thing to be hanging in the president's office. And Evelyn, where's WJAX? I heard the CIO is stepping up activities down here. It's a good thing, too, for the unions. I heard the CIO has communist ties. George, now do not tell me that you are reading that McCarthy crap. Uh, Evelyn! Line one, Senator. Oh. Uh, Jack, uh, as promised, and an exclusive. Well, the ICC's reversal. Well, that's fine. If you can't do it today, we can do it tonight. Uh, what do you mean you, you can't run the story, Jack? You're the owner. Well, that's fine. Then I can take it to the Sentinel or the Tribune. I don't need love, Jack. You should have told him. He doesn't want to know. That man is a sharecropper's son. He ran his first campaign on $500 crisscrossing the state because he couldn't buy a radio ad. He serves because he believes in changing things for the people around him. I ask you, George, to remember the things that he's changed for you. Miss Fullerton, back again. <laughs> How's Mr. Ball? Oh, he'll be in a good mood now that you're here. <laughs> I just got one of those Zenith TVs. 16 inches. Man, oh man. I'm gonna watch that Marcianos fight, huh? <laughs> I can't wait to see the look on my old man's face when he walks in the room and sees that screen. <laughs> my buddy, he says I better have job security if I'm going to be spending like that. <laughs> says I should be thinking about the railroad. Says if I worked at the railroad, I could make a down payment on a house by Christmas. Santa doesn't come unless you have a house. Right about that. <laughs> oh, uh, don't forget to let your friend know about Mr. Ball sitting first. How could I forget? Mm. Linda, my dear, you are a breath of fresh air. Mm. And George Smathers. Mr. Ball, <laughs> let me introduce you. Joe Wolf, Roger Maine, president of the Florida National Bank. I understand Mr. Hiss is in a bit of trouble. <laughs> Communist. Chambers found more documents. Can you believe that priest Cronin giving Nixon that information on Hiss's activities? I wouldn't cross the church. I wouldn't cross Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're a college man, correct? UF, sir. Father's a judge. William H., Florida Southern District. Sat on the bench 12 years. Roger and I were just discussing McCarran Ferguson. I don't believe the business of insurance is commerce, sir. Linda, my dear, you have made me a very happy man. Of course, Mr. Ball. <laughs> now, I understand Truman's asked you to run. Yes, sir. Truman knows that he needs somebody who can be... Moderate support. It, it, he feels that Pepper's a liability to the party. How much are you having funds? Huh, he's not going to need a budget if Pepper keeps up that pro-Stalinist talk of his. 50,000. Stalin is the best thing that's happened to this country. Perhaps we should pray for Stalin. <laughs> George, what kind of car do you think I drive? I, I, I don't know. Go on. In all honesty, I... Take a guess. A Lincoln? A Lincoln. Boy, why would I drive a Lincoln? <laughs> Lincoln didn't believe in things. <laughs> so what do you say? You ready to run? Ready to make the old man proud? You know, there's an old saying about liquor and debt. Used wisely, they can be beneficial. Used improperly, they can destroy a man. I'll sip slowly. <clears throat> Daniel Crisp, my resident magician. Care pain control to me. 
You, uh, you've been working a long time with Senator Pepper. Since college. Mm -hmm. You asked him to get you out of the Marines? The war was pretty much over. Asked to get out of the Navy also. I just wanted to get back to D.C. He seems to have done quite a lot for you. Likewise. How would you characterize your relationship with him? I have nothing but the utmost respect for Senator Pepper. Uh, the true gentleman does not make any man conscious of his inferiorities. That's Sigma Alpha Epsilon's motto, eh, George? Are we going to continue down the road to communism? I decry people in the Democratic Party infusing into it the doctrine of Stalin under the banner of Thomas Jefferson. Let's get back to work. Please, Millie. Now, if I had to choose between big government and big business, well, let's just keep the people's government big and big business small. This is not what we agreed on. I have to address what's happening. What's happening is you're going to be buried alive if you don't address this smear campaign. This is what's behind it. Nobody cares what's behind it, Claude. They care that you are a communist sympathizer. I am not stooping to those tactics. I want to talk to you about George. Oh, not now. I am concerned. That boy begged you to get him out of his Marine Commission. And then he begged you to get him out of his Navy community. You cannot expect a young man like that to not seek higher office. Truman did not call him to talk about Pat Cannon's seat. George hasn't called me, and I'm sure I would be the first to know if he had. And if he didn't want you to know? <sighs> I saw him talking to Linda Fullerton. She is a friend of his. She's an associate of Ed Ball. I said not now. The leader of the radicals and extremists is on trial in Florida. A raid against him will be loyal Americans, and against us will be northern labor bosses, socialists, and radicals. Florida will not allow herself to be caught in the spiraling spiderweb of the Red Network. We have got to pub publish his letters. The ones begging to get out of his commission, We've got to expose him for the opportunist he is. They are publishing a pamphlet. Why did you do it? What? Why did you do it? What are you talking Go about? Go to ball. It needed to be done. Without asking. We knew there were going to be repercussions after the ICC. You didn't ask. Sometimes you just do. You didn't ask. You didn't want me to. This is not your campaign. I know the newspapers. You didn't ask. I just did it for you. You didn't like George from day one. From day one. This has nothing to do with that. You think this has something to do with that? <coughs> you really think this has something to do with that? The decision not to have children was ours. Alice! Stop. This is not Dudley. I Dudley. said stop. Is this the change you wanted? Thank God I don't have to wear the crimson of Pepper and Felix Frankfurter's Harvard Law School. And make no mistake, friends, Aldra Hiss is no friend of mine. I am deeply concerned with the intolerance that is so prevalent in America today. Why, the censorship that begins in the movies will next reach the press, the radio, the musician, the painter, and in time, the pulpit, as it has in every country that has become a police state. The people of our state will no longer tolerate the advocates of treason. The outcome will truly determine whether or not our homes will be destroyed. Our children will be torn from their mothers, trained as conspirators, and turned against their parents and their church. The vast majority of our citizens will not be led astray by pious talk of a free economy that does not guarantee them housing, that does not provide a job at a decent wage, and ignores their needs and basically leaves them helpless in the economic jungle. I made the charge that the people of Florida 
no longer supports communist sympathizers, the mouthpiece of fellow travelers, the apologists for Stalin. It is one of the most vicious, dirtiest campaigns we have yet to see in the American political landscape. I accept your nomination as a solemn mandate to be guided by those principles as your U.S. Senator in Washington, D.C. And when I discharge those duties, I will always have in my mind the heart of the people of Florida.